Hello, welcome back to Create Craft Costume, where we think creating is as close to magic as we're gonna get. And we are back in Cheryl's sewing studio, and today, what are we going to be making? We are going to be making the bag that goes with the blanket that we talked about in our previous video on maximizing the fabric that you have. That is linked. <laughs> Oh, it's right there. Like, <laughs> there you go. At any rate, <laughs> we started this project because we wanted to start using some of the extra fabric that we have because we collect fabric because it's just gorgeous and fun. So we wanted to make a blanket in a bag out of what we had. So that was all linked in the other video. Now we're going to actually make the bag that we spoke of. And it's awesome. Just a couple quick notes before we get started. Cheryl likes to add several details to her pieces. It's one of the things that I've loved working with her. And so some of them are optional, some of them are not. Some of them give you benefits that you cannot do without them. So I would recommend watching the entire put together first before you decide what you're going to add and not add to your bag. Let's get started. Okay, now that we have the blanket portion done, we are going to be working on the bag. As a reminder, our bag is 22 by 15 inches and it does have a flap that comes and falls around the front. So we are going to cut the remaining piece, which was 44 by 40, that's this. We are gonna cut that in half to get our 22 and then we are gonna cut one 15 inch piece off to get our face. This will be our back and our flap. If you want a more detailed description of our pattern, we did do a video about this and I will link that in the iCard above. Okay, so here we go on the bag. Now, you might not know about this about Ashley, but she loves directional fabric. She does. It's yes, her do. favorite <laughs> thing. I was quite surprised when she purchased this because and you can see this is an all over pattern. The little mermaids are every which way, the little it's turtles kind of are every which way. Will you shush? <laughs> it doesn't have a directional pattern. So we don't have to worry about having it go the right way on the bag. If you did, if it had a one way, you've got to decide what do I want at the top of my bag? What do I want at the bottom of the bag? Does it matter? It doesn't matter on this piece. So what we've done is I've got the selvage over here and the selvage over here. So I've opened this piece out so now the width of the fabric is this way. We're cutting at 45, 44 wide. We're going to remove the selvage because I don't trust those. Right now we are taking the 44 and 40. And this is an example of, remember how I said when you write it down, you don't have to think about it anymore. This is what I mean. So we took the 44 and we folded it in half. And now we are making the 22 inch width. So we will have a piece left over right after this cut. Ashley is absolutely right. We are cutting this 22, which is in half. I'm trying to mend my ways because I, <laughs> Ashley is giggling. <laughs> I'm trying to mend my ways and mark things because everybody knows I don't always do that. Now I have a delightful little line that I can just cut up. And in all kidding aside, I've been doing this for 50 years. So I'm a pretty good judge, not meaning to tout my own horn, but I'm a pretty good judge of distances. But don't if you measure. Can. Measure, mark with chalk, you'll always, you'll always be better. Especially if you're a beginner. I. The reason I was laughing is because I still do that and she didn't understand why until I explained. So if you are a beginner, don't feel bad. Measure, mark, measure like 50 times and cut once. There we That's go. Right. <laughs> exactly right. Okay, so now we've got it 22 inches wide. So now we're going to cut the front piece of our bag. That is where the 15 inches comes in. Yes. Okay. We don't have a right and a wrong side, so it doesn't really matter. I am going to put this right here and we've got that squared up again right there squared up right there our 15 inch piece 
is right there. So that is how our bag is going to be right there. Just so you can get an idea of where we're going with this, here is the other piece that we did not cut in pieces because this is how the bag is going to go together. This is the front panel of our bag. This is our back panel and this will be the flap that comes over the top. So now you can get an idea of how this bag is put together. We are going to cut the same thing as this out of the pink because we're going to line it in the pink. We are also going to put a band of the contrasting color around the sides to make it square three inch piece that will give it the 3D look of our bag. So we're going to cut the pink and then we'll start putting it together. Okay, we got ready to put this together and as I was feeling the two pieces of fabric, it was a little lighter weight than I had anticipated. So I wanted to make it a little bit heavier. Since the fabric is just cotton broadcloth, which is great, we're going to put an interfacing in it. This is an iron-on interfacing. It's a 950 Pelon, one of my favorite kinds. It's very versatile. We are going to just cut this out and iron it on. Now you have a choice. You can iron it on the, fab, the outside of the bag, which is this, what I call the right side, which is wrong, the wrong term. You can iron it on the side that's going to be out, or you can iron it on the lining. I'm going to iron it on this side because I want a nice flat finish on the outside of the bag. Easy way to tell on interfacing is the bumpy side. If you can feel it, it's bumpy. You can see those little bumps in there. That is the bumpy side. That is the side that goes against the fabric. And then you can see it's very smooth on this side, kind of softer. You iron this onto your iron, it's going to be stuck to your iron. Not a good idea. So here's the back piece, the back and the flap. I'm cutting it along here. And as you can see, it's not quite long enough. We are not going to worry about that because the thing about on is it is easily seamed. So now we have a continuous piece of interfacing for the back and the flap. Put the two bumpy sides down. It'll be just fine. You won't see any difference on the right side. It'll stick together just fine. You can piece interfacing. You do not need to sew it together before you iron it down. You can just iron it down and it will stay. Okay, so we're going to iron all these together and then we will start sewing on the bag. Now that both the back and the front of the bag are ready, we need to talk about this three inch portion. This is what's going to form the base or the bottom of our bag, but we need to determine how long do we need to cut this three inch wide. Well, in order to understand that, you need to realize that this is the back and this is the front it needs to go up both sides. So both of these pieces are gonna be folding together like a bag and this, this three inch piece will be in the middle at the bottom, okay? So that means I need to add 15 and 15 just for the side pieces because it goes up and then it goes down. But then I have to have enough to fill the base and our bag, as we remember, is 22 inches wide. So then I add 22 and this is without any extra give so we like to add at least one inch just to give it some give around the corners and again that's also if you want to be really really super specific it's always easier to trim stuff down than it is to have to add things so adding an inch or two at the end is never really that big of a problem but so now what we need to do is whatever coordinating fabric you have, you are going to cut one long strip that is three inches wide. And now it has to be 53 inches long. So what we've done is we have not only cut this, we've also interfaced this. And this is just for the bottom of the bag. 
Okay, so now we're going to attach the band to the bag, which is going to make it into the bag. It's pretty cool how it comes together. So here's our long strip that measures all the way around the bag. What we're going to do is we're going to find the middle of that, and we're going to put a little mark with Taylor's chalk right there. Or you can finger crease it if you don't have Taylor's chalk. You just finger press it and then you'll have a little mark right there. Either way works. It's important to put it in the middle because if you don't put it right in the middle, you'll have too much on one side, not enough to go up the other side. So we've got the middle of the, of the band. We'll do the same thing with the middle on the bag. Find that. I'll just do a little finger press because we don't need anything. Pinch that. Okay, so now we've got that little mark and this little mark. Our bag is, is going to go together like this. What we're going to do is we're going to sew along this way, pin the corner, and then go up the side. As you can see, it goes up the side. You'll have a little extra. The same thing on this side. We're going to go up the corner right like that. Now, before we do that, we decided that we would like to add a pocket on the side panel of the bag. If you don't wish to do a pocket, skip past this next section, but we're going to quick make a pocket and then we'll come back and put the band on. All right, we are ready to do the pocket. Now again, this is totally optional, does not strengthen the bag or anything. It just gives it a little fun detail. We found this little mermaid scrap that matches the little mermaids on our major fabric. So we thought we'd make a little pocket out of this. So this is the band that goes around the side, three inch band. So obviously you make the pocket the same width as the band. Now the reason it's this tall is because we had this scrap of fabric. You want a taller pocket, just make, you can make it any height you wish. But this is how much fabric we had to use this. So we've cut the two pockets. We've interfaced the back to give it the, the body it needs. Then you have a lining. Here's the lining of the pocket, so it's going to be assembled like this. Now, we thought we'd throw in another little fun skill here, and that is to put some piping at the top. If you're not familiar with piping, it is the little trim that you'll see on pillows a lot. Um, bedspreads, comforters will have a little binding little edge in the binding like this. Now, this is how it's made. You use cotton cording and then a piece of any kind of fabric you want. Piping is quite simple. It can be very intimidating. So that's why we thought we'd just try it on this little pocket that you can just practice on. First thing you need to do is the piping. You are going to assemble this piping because that's going to go in between the fabric and the lining. So that is the first thing I'm going to do is make the piping. When I get that done, I will come back and show you the next step. Okay, so here's Ashley at the sewing machine. She's got her piece of fabric and the cotton cording in the middle. You're going to fold the fabric over the cotton cording. And then you're going to sew close to that, but you don't have to get right up against it this time around. We're not using a piping foot. We're using the regular sewing foot, regular presser foot. You're just going to go straight on down through to the other end. Okay, there you go. So now she's got that sewn. You can see that it is loose. That cording will slide right through. So you don't need to worry about getting super, super close. You'll do the close stitching to that on the next round when we attach it to the fabric. All right, now we're ready to attach the fabric. Now, because we're just starting, and this is Ashley's first time in making piping as well, so we're going to walk through this slowly. You're going to take the lining fabric, put it on top of the piping piece. So the reason we stick this upside down, because you're going to be tempted to want to do this. That's right. But that means you're hiding your piping when you turn your pocket back out. So you're going to take your lining fabric, and this doesn't have a right and wrong side and you're gonna put what looks like upside down. Mm -hmm. Because then when this folds over. It's gonna be beautiful. That's where your piping is. And I also just realized I don't wanna line this up all the way over here because then I miss a lot of my pocket. So I don't, I don't have to line it all the way up. I'm just gonna line it like just past the stitches. Perfect. I sew right down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Still with the Still foot. Still with that foot. Okay. 
Am I still trying to get as close as possible? Nope, you're just trying to tack that down. Perfect. You can even zigzag it if you are concerned about it fraying. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but that is a possibility. And off she goes. Show us how that looks when you turn that back. Ta-da! Look how pretty that looks. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. So, get your outside fabric. So this is the outside pocket. You want to make sure you know, well, if it's directional. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if I turn it this way, I have it the way I want. So, there we go. Okay. Now, on this one, you are going to take off that foot, and you're going to put on a zipper foot, which is right there. Because now you are going to sew right up close to that piping. And the reason we didn't do it on the other two is now your basting stitches will not show in your piping. The only thing that will show is nothing, just the piping. She's going as close to that as she can. Does it matter if I hit the rope? Nope. Well, I don't want you to sew all the way across it, but if you catch just a little bit of it, that's fine. Not Sorry. gonna lie, I totally thought she meant don't want me to sew all the way across this, and I was <laughs> like, now you tell me? <laughs> no, 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 no. You no. do sew all the way across the piping. You're fine. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, flip it around. Let's see what you got. Lucky there. That's the inside. That's the outside. Isn't and that beautiful? I'll be honest, there are some parts I could have gotten closer, but that's why this is a, I think this is a fun way to start learning this technique is there's no harm, no foul. You can really learn how to maneuver and how you should use your, your presser feet. And it's interesting you say that because now it's done. You can easily go over that again and get closer if you like. There's no harm. Sew over it one more time. And now that you know what it oh, feels I'm like, doing it. get it a little bit closer. Totally can easily it. be done. Let's see what you think now. <laughs> That's better. Better. Mm -hmm. That's definitely better. Yep. And now that is all there is to do piping. Whether you do great big piping on a pillow, little teeny typing, piping around the old-fashioned pajamas for little boys, whatever. That's all there is to it. Easy as can be. And, and so it looks fabulous. And that means the width of your cord is what's going to determine the how width of the piping. Big your piping mm -hmm. is. Yeah. I'm excited. Now, now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to sew over the ends of each of this and then trim the piping off because we don't want the piping to fray inside there. So we're going to go sew right over the end of the piping. Mm -hmm. So right here. Yep. That's just a couple <laughs> of stitches is all you need. There you go. And now she can trim that off. We'll get it pressed up. Okay, so now we're going to finish the bottom edge of the pocket. The side seams of the pocket will be in the side seams of the bag, so we don't need to worry about finishing those off. I have a real aversion to raw edges, so instead of turning it over, we're going to do this. Sew along the bottom. And we're going to turn this right back out the other way. And there you have your finished bottom of your pocket once it's pressed. So we'll just put the other sides in the side seam. Okay, we are back with our finished pockets ready to put them on the band. We have lined up the center of the band with the center of the bag. We are going to come over here to the side and put the band up above. You're putting it, fabric folds in right size to right side, that's where it's going to go up. Now, so we know we're going to fingerprint that right there. That is the bottom of our bag. So now I'm going to turn that over. That is the bottom of our bag right there. So we know this sits on the bottom. So we want our pocket to be up just a little bit, I think. You could put it right at the bottom right there if you wish. What do we think, Ashley? Should we put it up a little bit? Or right at the bottom. I like putting it up a little bit because it gives you more wiggle room. Okay, let's do that. Okay, we'll put it up just a little bit. We're going to put it right there. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we have pinned 
the pockets on where we think they are going to go. Now we're going to pin the band to the bag and then we're going to verify the placement of those pockets. So we're matching up the chalk marks we made earlier with the center. So right there, put a little pin in there, put a pin over here closer to the side. Same on the other side. Now the test comes to see how well we place those pockets. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that up like that. That's where the seam's going up. So that pocket is going to be that high, been about a half an inch of fabric from the bottom, which I think is going to be perfect. Let's see this one. I can already feel this one is not in the same place. Look, that one is too low. Sewing is an interesting thing. You think you've measured, but you always want to double check. So we're going to move this pocket up just a smidge till it matches that other one. And that gives us about the half inch. So that's why we measure it again. Make sure that that pocket is exactly where we wish that to be. Okay, now you're probably asking, how are you going to make that turn? You're going to get your scissors, and you are going to make a cut in from the corner about 3 eighths of an inch diagonally. Okay, so you cut that right there. This is going to turn up like that. You can come along here, cut that corner, turn it, and go up the side. Not this one because this is in the wrong spot. How can you tell? It's not down where it needs to be. It needs to be right there. You see how that fits in the corner on both sides now? Really glad I filmed it. Okay, so now we've turned it to the right side, and you can see you've got the corners of your bag starting to look like a bag. It's going to be adorable. Now we have to do the other side. So we're going to turn it right back the way it was. Those pockets back in, turn that side up because we want this to match on the bottom. Very important. Now remember, this one's longer because it has the flap. That does, we're not worried about that. So we are going to measure exactly how far this is on this piece because we want the corners to be square. This is exactly 21. Okay, so our bag, that we get the middle, which is 11. I'm going to mark that, put that pin right across on that one so we know that's our middle so you see how that's going to be straight the bag is centered got that pinned right there now we come to the corners we're going to pull that out and the corner is going to be sewn right there can you see how that is straight up that is straight up the seam line so we're going to put a little finger press that is going to be the mark for this corner right there and we're going to turn it and make our little clips we're going to come over to this other side this one might be a little easier for you to see pull that straight up so that fold runs right along that seam line that's going to make our pocket square and that little fold right there is going to you can see how it even falls right in there that's where it wants to fall and that's where we're going to pin it right there because when we make that little vertical clip, it's going to go to right there. So you can see we're going to match it up perfectly. Make that pin mark right there. Okay, now we're going to turn it back over the other way. Make those 
clips right here and put it up the other side. Put it on the other side. Okay, and then we can fit that in and right up the other side. Now, when you get up to the top, you're only going to sew to right there. We've got this a little bit longer, so we're going to trim that off. We're going to stop our sewing at the top right there. Well, good thing Ashley is here because she pointed out the fact that, again, I cut the inside fabric, which is fine. It doesn't matter, but you need to cut the band or you're not going to get that corner. That's how you get the corner. See, if you don't cut that, you're not going to get around that corner. So I did cut the diagonal and it was in the perfect spot, but we also need to cut the band because that's what has to make the sharp turn. Senior moment. See, now with that clip in the right spot, oh look, it makes just a beautiful little corner, which is what we want. That this needs, is a CRS moment. <laughs> that needs to be our tagline. <laughs> Why do you think we're recording? <laughs> then I don't have to remember it. <laughs> As in Sean Connery's famous line in Raiders of the Last Crusade or whatever it was. Sure I wrote it down Raiders in my... The Lost Ark, but <laughs> is that what it was? No, it wasn't. Not that it was the second one. Is it The Last Crusade? The I Last think, Crusade. I think you just combined two, <laughs> well, two pop culture references. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, it's that one when he said, he just goes, there's three challenges, and I found the clues. Well, what are they? He goes, you don't know? He said, I wrote them down in my diary so I wouldn't have to remember them. You've got your two corners right there and your little pocket. Other side. Two corners right over there. And your pocket. So since I'm sure I'm not the only one wondering, how do we close this? I didn't stitch that down! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Okay, friends, um, hopefully you can back up and do this stitch before this point because as you can see, uh, we do not have a pocket. We have, I don't know what we have, but it's not a pocket. But this is why long open arm machines are great. Just slide it on up, put your little presser foot down, and we are just gonna stitch along the bottom and close up this pocket. Like I say, if you were smart and did this, it should have been done when we were pinning in the side seams. And now you have a pocket. Because it would have looked exactly the same. But now, look. Da, 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 da. We have a pocket. I just forgot. Totally forgot. CRS. Indeed. Okay, we are back. And I had a little bit more of this really adorable mermaid scale fabric that we did the outside pockets on and I thought oh let's make a pocket on the inside. We did the exact same thing. I sewed the pocket, we put the little lining on the back, we've got the piping at the top. Now this time we're going to close the bottom seam of the pocket in the three inch band on the bottom and then we're going to sew up the sides this time. Same principle, same steps, just a little bit different order. So we are going to sew this down right now on these sides then we'll put this in the bottom seam and then this pocket will be closed. This will be on the inside of the bag. 
All right, we have sewn the pocket to the lining of the bag. Now we're going to attach the band and the other side of the bag that has the flap on it, put it together just the same way we did the outside, and then we'll be back and show you how to put the two bags together. Okay, we have sewn the bag together, the lining. There's our pocket on the inside. We sewn it right together the same way we did the other bag. So now, to show you what this is going to look like, we'll get the outside, slide this on inside. And that's how the bag is going to look. There's the pocket on the inside right there. Pockets on the sides, fully lined. And then there's the flap that comes over the top. So now, last thing to do is to close in all these raw edges and attach the strap. So what we're going to use for the strap is this webbing right here. And we're going to put buttons and elastic. And these are the buttons we're going to put on it. So I'm going to get it put right sides together, put these, take it apart, put right sides together, sew it around, and while we're sewing it around, we will put these pieces in. So now I'm sliding the outside, inside, the inside. So now we've got right sides together all the way around. And we are going to sew this seam around there, up here, and around here. We're going to leave a little bit open so we can turn it inside out. Then we will press it. But while we're doing that, we're going to mark where we're going to put the strap, which will go inside here, it's going to be attached in the side there, and the elastic will be in the top. And the biggest thing is you want to make sure it's not twisted. So it's straight, straight, and it's going to come up straight on the other side, right like that. Because the worst thing in the world is to get this all done and have the bag strap be twisted. And again, pin both sides of it When I'm looking at it right now, that's not quite right in the middle. Tuck this right down inside, and then we're going to sew along the outside right there. Okay, we are all ready to sew now. The, the strap is pinned in the inside on both sides. The elastic is pinned in the inside, ready to go. We're going to start here. We're going to sew around, up, across, down, around, and then we're going to leave our opening so you can turn the right sides out to finish your bag. You need to leave, I would say, probably four to five inch opening to turn it to right side out. that corner down so we can turn it. And then we're going to trim this down so we can have a nice edge right there. Or a nice corner. And we're going to trim this down right there. Here we go. Oh, the anticipation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's my favorite part.
sliding down inside. Find the elastics for the flaps. There's one. There's two. Pull out these sides, press it, there's our bag. Okay, we've got it all pressed, turned around. That's how it's going to look. What is left to do are a few very important details. The first one is, remember, we have this opening right here. We've got to stitch that closed. So we're just going to top stitch along that, but we're going to continue and go all the way around the bag just to give it some reinforcements. Then we're going to go over it again about half an inch to an inch in. So there's going to be two rows of top stitching all the way around the front. That's the first thing to do. Then if you remember as we turn this bag, we put it inside, the lining down inside, we need to take care that when we pull our bag out, the lining doesn't come out with it. So we're going to attach the lining down here at the bottom. One of the biggest benefits of having this side pocket is we can do exactly what I did when I didn't sew it down and stitch right across there through the lining. So now when we pull anything out of the bag, the lining is going to stay intact. I just wanted to give you a little tip. If you're beginning or if you're a little bit nervous about linings or you have a lining that's slippery, I pinned it at the bottom. You saw that. I would also recommend putting some pins right here on the side and on this other side, maybe even on the bottom right here to make sure none of that lining slips over and gives you a tuck on the inside because you want it to look like that on the inside. So it's just smooth. But you can sometimes get a tuck and that will eliminate that if you pin all of that back away from where you're, seam you're sewing. So if you got a tuck, is it the end of the world? No, oh no, 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 heavens no. But if there was a tuck here, you'll just come undo whatever stitch is tucked in, pull it to the side, go back over to the other side and just sew it again if you have to unpick it. Sometimes it's just one or two stitches at the end will catch it and sometimes you can just undo that one little stitch and it will release it. If not, just unpick it, pin it right here and then just sew across it again. Now for round two. Now we've got it tacked in. Look at this. Our lining does not come out. It is down in the bottom of that bag. It is stuck in there. So you are ready to roll. Okay, last step is to line up the buttons, put those on there. I just thought I would line this up so it went from pocket to pocket. I thought that'd be kind of cute. You just, wherever you want it to put it. And I just put a pin right through the loops where I want the buttons to be. And I believe, we're going to try it, I believe that my arm will fit in there so we can sew them on by machine. So that's what I'm going to go do now. And then we're done. So as of right now, our big main buttons have been sewed on by machine, but I hope you've noticed that Cheryl likes to add little finishing details to her projects. And one of those is that she's the first person I saw layer buttons to make an interesting design. And the holes don't match up, so I can't, I can't just sew this on, but don't be afraid to take a little bit of hot glue. And clearly I'm not in my craft room, because you've never seen me hot glue before. But take a little bit of hot glue, make sure that you decide which way the holes are gonna go, whether they're vertical or horizontal. And we're just gonna add those right on top. And our bag is done. 
So something I really like about this project is that I had never considered making a coordinating bag with the blanket. The other thing that I hope you notice is when you pull it open, the front of the bag has that kind of dome structure and it's easier to hold out. That would not be the case if we did not add that interfacing. So that's why for bags, the interfacing really isn't an option. It is part and parcel with making the structure work better for you. The thing that I like best about this bag is the side pockets. They're little enough to hold keys or a hotel card or a snack or whatever, and they hold the idea and add to the structure of the bag. The other thing is the pockets on the inside. Again, the interfacing gives it lots of structure. The pockets on the inside are kind of hidden, so you can put your things in there. But the best of all, you can toss it right in the washer and right in the dryer. When you take it out of the dryer, just put it you know, put it back in its shape. It will still hold the shape because of the interfacing. But just shape it into the size of the bag, hang it up, let the band dry. This, the strap will be the hardest thing to dry. And you are good to go. It's completely washable. And let's get real, it's just super cute. I'm big for aesthetics, it's great. Okay, so we have finished the bag. I hope you'll try it. It's a fun little project. Works up nicely with extra fabric. And for the little girl that this one's for, she's going to love it, taking oh, it so to excited. the beach. She will love it. You can customize it any way you want. And if you have any ideas that you've done on bags, we'd love to hear how your projects have worked out, if you've done it a different way. Um, what does that mean? It means comment down below. Comment we down below. Love, we would there love you go. to hear We would love to hear your what you ideas. have to say. We had fun time with this. Before working with Cheryl, I've only ever made a blanket. So the fact that you can make a coordinating bag is really cool to me. And that's why I wanted to share this tutorial. If you have, and it has pockets, it's like dresses, right? So if you have any other ideas or if you make this, please share your creations either in the comments down below or on our Instagram. Our Instagram has the exact same name. And if you are enjoying what you see and want to see more, actually, I'll put out more whether you do or not, but we would love for you to join our, our family and please click the subscribe button and the like button. And if you have anyone who needs any of these tips, we would appreciate a share. But next, we are going to be sharing more fall and holiday content. So we will see you in our next video. Enjoy.